Today we stopped by Green Ridge Beagle Club and spoke with owner Bill Doobie. He took us around and showed us some of the new upgrades he's made to the pen. Dad also put a couple of young hounds down to chase some rabbits while we sat and talked beagles. Unlike a lot of pens, a lot of, a lot of uh, beagle clubs, which are sanctioned by the American Kennel Club, are only allowed to have AKC registered beagles not higher than 15 inches. Fortunately for me and others like me in the area here, if we get a puppy to start, or if we want to give a dog a little work like we're doing today, we can do it here because we're not AKC registered and that allows us to do whatever we want because this is Bill Doobie registered. Right. And, exactly. and Bill Doobie registered, he's the first, last and only word about this pen, which is a good thing. Yeah. About how it works, ain't it, Bill? Exactly. Oh, they will be. No, go ahead. I'll hold the door. Come on, Charlie. <laughs> Don't. Pop, 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 pop. Go find a bunny. Pop, 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 pop. That's going to be a good one there, I think, Bill. Yeah, what I've seen and heard, yeah. She's fast. Plastic pallets help a lot, huh? Yeah. You don't, they don't have to rot. They don't rot. You don't right. have to replace them. I did some work on the bridge here this week too. They fixed some new board. Put some down here and see if we get a start. I got two hair in here. You got some hair yeah. in there? Yeah. There's two in there, and I don't know how many hairs in this sanctuary. Cleared all the trees out of there, huh? Yeah, I've been making brush piles and raking. And Nice. Got a lot of cover for them. Yep, 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 yep. Sanctuary, Sam. Remember we talked about it last time, I think? They get they get pushed hard after an hour or two. They'll, they'll go in these cement blocks and go in there. Those cement blocks have openings in them that the fence is cut. So the rabbits can go right into the right into the in the sanctuary and get out of the way of any pressure. A lot of times I'll see the dogs run one into that cement block. Yeah. The hare will run all the way up the fence line and go out that cement block. <laughs> oh and no! The dogs kidding. are all down and say, "What happened?" You see that happen? Oh yeah, a no, lot that, of times. That's awesome. A lot of times. Go in one hole, come out the other. Yeah. <laughs> And the dogs are all confused by the time they oh, figure yeah. out where they are. Yeah. There's so many here and then they go find another one. But, but the only thing I haven't seen any little ones this year. The babies. Haven't. No? You normally would by now? Yeah. And you didn't see a lot of uh, red, blood in the red in blood the urine. In the in March from the females. I did not see that this huh. year. Wonder why. And I got a friend in Massachusetts that raises hair. They don't have any baby hair. Huh. All kinds of cottontail. Wonder what the, wonder what that's all about. Mother Nature. Just said we've got enough. We're cutting off the supply. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Well, Bill, I don't think I've ever been down here when you haven't been doing some kind of <laughs> project, work, fixing yeah. up, cutting up, cleaning up. Anytime I've ever been in here, summer or winter, you're working. Yeah. So, and that's what keeps a pen up too, you know. And you say there was somebody there, what is it, Michigan that wanted to put a pen together someplace out yeah, of state? Yeah, he, he messaged me after seeing that yeah. YouTube video, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk. Good. Yeah. You're going to tell him what to do, huh? No. Suggestion. Suggestion, then he's got to do it. I wonder if he realizes, or anybody realizes, how much work <laughs> goes into uh, this. <laughs> every day. Every day. Every day. Yeah. And uh, nobody does a better job at it than you, that's for sure. Now you said you did some work on the bridge. Let's see what you did down there. All right, well, yeah. we can look at the fence. How oh. wide while we're right here? Okay, yeah, let's do that. I'll follow you. All righty. We have had some trouble. If it puts out 2,000 volts or less, I got to walk the fence. Okay. Sometimes yeah. all it is is a little stick. We'll be touching the ground to the hot. Take yep. that stick off and it's fine. But it's always way up in the back, you know? Huh. Yeah. Now, I put an electric fence around uh, my pond to keep the geese out yeah. because what happens is if geese can't get their babies in and out, they won't go into that body of water. Right. And since they crap all over the place, we didn't really didn't want to have any in the pond. And I put one strand of electric fence and I tested it with a piece of grass. Yeah. 
I've heard of that. Yeah, just lay the grass over there and you'll get, you know, just a little shock instead of lighting you up. Right. Well, this is working right. It's putting out 8,000 volts, so. 8,000 volts? Yeah. And that's designed to keep everything out, right? Yes, I saw where a fisher. She won't go anywhere. I, won't. I saw where a fisher came up to the fence last year and climbed up and he got shot, <laughs> fell right over backwards, <laughs> urinated all over the ground. And went right back where he came from. Is that the, is it safe to say you shocked the piss out of him? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> and you got a meter on that too, and everything, huh? Yeah, I want to test it right now. All yeah. right, well, we're going to test the electric fence. Six point three one. That's good. Did you see it? Yeah. That's that's uh after after it goes all the way around. So this side over here is gonna be a little hotter. This is uh all the controls. That uh, solar panel charges this battery, that charges this, that charges that, and uh makes so, everything work. So so you can do this completely off the grid. Just it's all solar. It's all solar, yeah. All solar. And something else I learned, these ground rods, Yeah. when you go solar, you have to use galvanized, not copper. Ah. I was having trouble with who would, that. Who would know that? Who would know that? Yeah. Well, we know it now. This should here, if it's working right, should be putting out a little bit more. This, this one be more than six something? Yes, this should be seven something. Seven point. Five three. Wow, that's quite a shock. <laughs> that's thousands. That's what seven Se thousand. Seven thousand. Yep. Damn, she's coming back now. Carly, come. Carly, Carly, come. All right, we'll go back in. Come on, girl. Come on, Carly. Come on. Yeah. Well, one of them's a rabbit dog anyway, Bill. Yes. Well, she's been over here a little bit more, so. So now you'll have all, uh, all this second growth coming in there now as you cut everything down, huh? Yes. More feed, more cover, more everything. Yeah, I've been feeding them apples, bread, rabbit pellets. Yeah. Let's see if they stop chewing on it. They've been chewing on it, huh? Oh, yeah, so I hope that I can save it. I got another tree in here, an older one I've been pruning and trying to save. What's that rig over there with the... That's where I put my uh, wire on when I spin oh, it out. Oh, okay, yeah. For the fencing? Yeah, I got a pole, 12 foot pole. I stick the wire, roll the wire, and stand it up and reel it right out. Now, I have a question. Why do you have locks on a lot of the poles? Well, at work, they, they threw them away at the salvage yard and I just took them. Just to, just to put them on the, to hold the fencing up? Yeah. Or? See, at one time, where all the uh, locks were, Yeah. The wire ran through, so then I had a ratchet strap. I could tighten it right up. So I if see. If you fasten it solid like this, I can't never tighten it back up. I see. That's part of the reason why I put the lock on. Okay, yeah. Who? Somebody, I think uh, Paul was asking me. I think it was Paul. Yeah, yeah. somebody was asking me. We we're out back, Ricky or some Paul, I guess. Yeah. And he said, "What are those locks for?" I'll have to ask him. I don't know. Yeah. But it makes sense. Yeah. What do you think of that female? She's going pretty good for yeah, the puppy, huh? You get some pictures, be good. And that's one dog over here. Yeah, well. <laughs> Almost half a dog. Brought it just for her for the ride, anyway. Right? Yeah. Having a good time. Oh, yeah. Watch yourself here, Sam. She's 
little soupy and a little slippery. Usually from the bridge, we can pretty much see it all, all the action right there, can't you? Yes, it? yes. She's right here. Funny she don't jump on his hoe. She, yeah, you know, rabbits aren't her thing. Like she just kind Yesterday, of Yesterday, I was working on this bridge and two of my dogs come down. I said, you guys all done, ready to go home? They hung around there for a few minutes. The next thing I knew, they went in there and they started the hair. That hair had to be sitting right there watching me all this time. While you're working on the bridge? Yeah. <laughs> they ran a half a circle and I pulled them off. Time to go home. Well, I stood here one day last week there when I was over and hair come right up and he, he came right up through here and he went in that little hole over there next to the brush pile. Yeah. And off they went, and off they went that way. <laughs> yeah. Plenty of rabbits. Yeah, I put uh, 32 in since uh, January 1. Of course, you got to stop now until September 1. So we got, when's it end? In, uh, on April 30th to uh, September 1, you cannot trap. Well, let's go down a little farther. Maybe we can see the hair cross. Okay. Yeah. If you can run it. So, so Bill, dogs that you're training in here, uh, how, how often do you run them? How, like, uh, it all depends if they can take it. You know, some of them come here and they're out of shape. They can't run every day. So if I go out in the morning and they come to the door, they're coming over. Yeah. So, but normally I run them every other day. Every other day. 10 miles. 10 miles each day. Yes. That you do run them. At least 10 miles. At least Sometimes 10. a little goes over. Yeah. A little under, whatever. Just goes on indefinitely like that yeah, every well, other day? Yeah. Well, puppy normally I bring over every day. Every day. I take them in a the puppy pen, get them excited on the um, a small pin. Yeah. Get them wound up, then bring them in here. Yeah. And normally a puppy, I run with an old dog or a slow dog to get them used to that. And then yeah. I'll boost them up to two dogs, three dogs, four dogs. Yeah. By the time they go home after a month, they normally will pack with four or five yeah. dogs. So if you're boarding a dog or training a dog, do you normally do it by the month? Yes. So, yeah. so any, any out of staters? Oh yeah. 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 Uh, Everywhere. I've got, I've got some coming. Yeah. I've got two puppies coming from New York, uh, June. Yeah. I've got two puppies. How old would they be about when you get them? Five months old. Five months old. Is that I've about got, the time you like to have them, around five months? Yeah. Yeah, me too. And I've got uh, two puppies coming from Texas Memorial Weekend for the summer. Wow. And I've got other people on my list that are on standby. Want to come, they're just yeah. not available, no availability yet. Right. Yeah. How many at a time will you run, like half a dozen? No, I normally run three or four. Three or four at a time, yep. Yeah. Never run more than four. Never run more than four, yeah. And usually after about a month in here, they they either got it or they don't, right? Yeah, they're in, they're in shape by then. They're in shape. Now, do some people uh, have you just keep their dogs in shape without, not, that don't need the training, but maybe older dogs that they want run, that you want run? Not really. No. They might come in September for a month, and then they'll hunt them in October and for yeah. the winter, and then maybe May for a month. And yeah. And normally, if they've been hunting all winter, they're in good enough shape so they don't have to run for a couple of months anyway. So. Yeah. Get them some rest. Right. Yeah. And of course, you get the... Hopefully the mothers are having young and we really don't want to hurt them anyway. So right. we kind of take it easy those months anyways in early spring. So. Yeah. Now if it gets rain, if it's a beautiful day, but what if it was going to start to rain, where would we go? We got a building down here we can get well, undercover. Well, let's go check that out while we're right here. Like I said, every day is a work day for Bill. Yeah. Work of love. Yeah, Bob said he ran a coyote uh, yesterday morning for two, two and a half hours. And then he said to, it dried up. There was huh. no more scent. Oh, what do you, how do you feel about that? Same way? I don't know much about coyotes, but I know this pin compared to a lot of pins, there's a lot of moisture in here compared to a lot of pins I've been. So normally you can run all day long here with scent. I got gotcha. you. What'd you hear? Blue Jay. I thought it was a hawk.
Will they carry the rabbits off? Hawk, oh yeah. Yeah, I got a feeder in here. Tell us a little bit about that feeder, Bill. How, how they, they keep the, they put the food in there. Yeah. Rabbits stick their head in there. Yeah. This Dogs way. can't get in there. Uh, sometimes a puppy will. Uh, the reason he put the rebar is they're supposed to be porcupine proof. Uh -huh. Porcupines chew. And of course they don't like to chew steel. So works pretty good. Then soon I'll be putting seven way dust. Yeah, around that. Powder down. Yeah. So that rabbits can dust themselves, keep the ticks off. All it. the rabbits will get into it too, huh? That's oh, yeah. nice. That's nice. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Any place where I got a cover, that's what I do. I put sand out. Seven way. Now I won't mention the name of any clubs, but uh, Samantha and I were at a club uh, and there was no cover on the on the theater. So one of the beagles was helping himself to the yeah. rabbit food. Samantha, being a little girl, she stuck her face down there to see what was going on, and he and he bit her lip, bit her in the oh. face, bit her in the face. And today, even even today, your the scar is this way on her lip, not like this. That that that's the worst. But fortunately, we went to a surgeon, and uh, that same day, and the surgeon. Uh, Got her, got her back to 100%. Wow. A couple of stitches and she was as good as new. No, didn't scare her away from any dogs. No, not afraid of dogs. No, she was raised with them, so yeah. she uh, has not been afraid of them since. So Bill, I, I noticed you got a you got a uh, Beagle Up shirt on there, uh, third annual. Tell us a little bit about that. What's going on with that? Well, this, I put on a field trial every year, second Saturday, Sunday in December, and this year I had a sponsor, Brent Cunningham and Jody Ann. She makes these sweatshirts up, the T-shirt I, I get on, and uh, she she gave me one for for uh, hosting the field trial and she donated one for the first place and second place in each event. Nice. So that's where these come from. Nice. And, uh, and now these field trials. She the back. Oh, there you go. And, uh, and the, uh, who gets those now, first and second place? First and second place, yeah. Nice, nice, that's up. Now, are these field trials open to just any grade dog or just registered dogs or what? Grade dog, registered dog, doesn't matter. I mostly do it for the kids, get kids involved. Nice. Of course, they have to have a parent with them. And um, that's mainly why I do it. Okay, so size, sex, whatever, doesn't make any difference. Nope. You can just come run your dog, get judged. If the right. dog does a good job, you, you, you'll get, now you, will you judge as well or? Yeah, I, I judged the field trial in uh, Space Town, New Hampshire this spring. I did uh, judge the little males. It's pretty cool. Now, uh, when's the field trial season for all, beagles? All summer long. All summer? Yeah. They got one in Camel this weekend coming up, and Waterville's got one May 21 and 2. Yeah. And um, Andrew Scoggin down in Minot's got one in uh, June, first weekend in June. Yep. Now, if somebody wants to know about when and where these field trials are, they're going to need registered dogs. 15 inches or smaller, and how will they uh, be able to find out information about these trials? Well, a better beagle in the Hounds of Hunting magazine or uh, word of mouth. I mean, these, these people are all, it's like a, a group, you know, everybody yep. contact each other. No, everybody yeah, contact. Yeah. I, I know when they all are. Right. I, the Maine Beagle Association puts out a card every year with all the dates on it. It's on Facebook. Okay, okay. Uh, not Not hard to find. No, no. Easy to find, get directions to the club as far as the time, the events, the different classes. Exactly. And away you go. Right. Bring your dog, have fun, and good luck. There and you these go. are all large packs, right? I mean, they're based no, on... No, uh, they do have small packs in the spring, but uh, they kind of drifted away from the small packs. 
So it's a lot of work. So what are, what are, what are they? It's the number of entries in that class is the number in the pack, right? So if there's 30 dogs, there's 30 dogs. If there's six, there's six. Yeah. And when they judge them, what are they judging them on? Uh, uh, their their the running ability. Uh, Mostly line control. Line control. Got to be on the track. When the hair turns, they got to turn. Yep. In other words, no overrunning, no stealing the line, no cheating, no swinging out there and right. doing all that crazy stuff, backtracking and stuff that uh, they the, the losers do, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, <they laughs> what get, happens to them when you see that? They get caught and they get culled. They get cut out of the pack, yep. and then they judge those that are left. Yep. Yeah. They got to be in shape. You know, they, the trials last at least three to seven hours, and if they're not in shape, they're not going to, they disqualify themselves. Yeah, know? and so speed's important too. Well, yeah, if, if it all depends what you got running. If they're all fast, yeah. But if you've got one running way out ahead, he ain't going to get no score because you're supposed to be judging the pack. So He's disrupting the pack if he's way out there. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You gotta settle into the pack. Yeah. So now I think it's probably safe to say that your pen here is as good a place to get a dog ready for a field trial as any place in the country, isn't it? Yeah, it's 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 hilly and uh thick. And they get in shape quick. A lot of water, a lot of moisture. A lot of water in it. Yeah. And a hot day like hot dyed dry day like today, you're you're more likely to to, to keep our hair going than you would someplace else that doesn't have that moisture, correct? Exactly. I've got a young dog in here, two of them, one's, one's running and one's laying in the mud, so <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got a mudder. I'm like getting, a mudder. The, you know, in a horse race, that's a good thing, but in a rabbit run, I don't know if that's very good or not. No. Looking for catfish. Yeah, must be <laughs> looking for catfish, yeah. <laughs> well, Sam, we want to thank you for taking the opportunity to do this little video for us. And then, of course, Mr. Doobie here, who is uh, just a workhorse when it comes to keeping this rabbit pen up. I mean, I, I tell everybody I see that he just doesn't stop. He's just a going machine. You know, before he had the rabbit pen, he weighed 400 pounds. Just kidding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he got the rabbit pen, now just the skin holding his bones together. <laughs> no, but uh, but he's, uh, he's out here summer and winter. You know, wherever you find him, you come down here almost any day. And, and if anybody wants to get in touch with him... Uh, they can contact me or they can contact him and what I'll do is I'll take their I'll take the person's information and I'll pass it on the bill and that way Bill can contact him at his leisure because quite frankly he's busy keeping this rabbit pen running and uh, he will get back to you in time yes. and either through Facebook or by phone whatever whatever necessary and yeah. and uh, and then any questions or comments that you might have based on the video or based on the pen or based on Bill that you want to leave on the video itself Bill will get to see, and he'd be, he'll be, I'll be able to answer them for you or through him or whatever, but we'll make sure that your questions get answered. Because, you know, usually what happens, has been my experience, and maybe Bill's, is the more information you put out, the more questions there are. And if that's the case, we've, we, you know, we just, we're not doing it for any uh, love or money, so if you, if you do have questions, we'd like to share that with you. And uh, I think hats off to Bill for not only the pen, but for having that event in December for the kids and, and for the benefit of the kids because without them we won't need a rabbit pen or anything else because in, uh, in time us old guys are going to be gone and it's going to be up to the kids to keep the ball rolling. Exactly. Anything else you can think of Bill that you want to add to our expose of your pen here? No, no that's yeah. good. Yeah and uh, we want to thank you all for subscribing to the channel please click on the bell for any future up updates and uh, again, Samantha, we thank you so much for uh, your time, your equipment, and then, of course, uh, your, your beautiful smile. That's what, that's what keeps everybody coming back to these videos. I know it is. <laughs> so, so, so if you're out there someplace watching these videos, hats off to you, and thanks again. Have a wonderful day, and stay tuned for future videos and updates. We'll keep you posted the best we can.